Medieval rocket cats. These bad boys were the fantastic idea of German artillery master Franz Helm, who believed strapping these cats with explosives would revolutionise the siege warfare game. The feline image appears in his 16th century manuscript under a section titled To Set Fire to a Castle or City, which you can't get at otherwise, in which an incendiary device would be strapped to the cat in order to set castles on fire. Sadly, these cats weren't actually flying rocket pussies, but instead meowing fire. Fireballs. The device would have a fuse long enough for the cat to make it inside the fortification before it would burn alive. The idea was that the cat would make it into the castle and hide within hay or straw, causing a major fire within the settlement to distract the defenders from the attackers. Despite the obvious animal cruelty, there is no evidence that Helm actually put this idea into practice, and it's likely the cats would have run back to where they came from, setting fire to your own camp. The Nazi Sun Gun. This bad was the fantastic idea of German rocket scientist Hermann Oberth, who had plans for a space station with a 100 meter wide concave mirror to reflect sunlight onto a concentrated point on Earth. Oberth described his invention as like the hand mirrors the schoolboys use to flash circles of sunlight on the ceiling of their classrooms. His design in 1923 was originally intended for peaceful purposes. However, with the Nazis being Nazis, they soon tried to find a way to turn it into a 20th century Death Star. Nazi scientists calculated that the sun gun could produce enough focused heat to burn a city or boil an ocean. The Nazis believed they could construct this murder mirror within 50 to 100 years, and it is thought it would arrive in space pre-assembled with a small crew living inside the space station. Of course the war ended before the Nazis could construct such a weapon, but luckily thanks to a little known movie called Star Wars, we can all see how it might have turned out. Da Vinci's Fighting Vehicle This bad boy was the fantastic idea of its namesake, Leonardo da Vinci, whose armoured machine is the described as the precursor to the modern tank. Plans for this tit-shaped war machine were originally drawn up in 1487, with the cone being made of a wood covering, reinforced with metal plating, and the slanted angle allowed for deflection of enemy fire. It was fixed with a number of light cannons around the perimeter, and wheels powered by large cranks on the inside that allowed for 360 motion of the vehicle. The machine was to be directly driven onto the battlefield, with its design aiming to intimidate and scatter opposition armies. However, there was one small problem with Leo's design. The powering cranks went in opposite directions, making forward motion impossible. Of course a basic engineering flaw like this would never escape the detailed mind of Da Vinci, so scholars believe he sabotaged his own design to discourage it from ever being built, as he was a pacifist at heart. It probably wouldn't have worked anyway, as the vehicle would have been too heavy to move, but I'm sure it would have been a nice bit of battlefield scenery. The Claw of Archimedes This bad boy was the fantastic idea of Greek mathematician and namesake, Archimedes whose ancient weapon was designed in order to defend the seaward portion of the Syracuse walls against amphibious assaults. The idea behind this cracking claw was that when attacking ships got close to the walls, an iron hand connected to a chain and guided by a soldier would drop down and fasten itself to the ship. A pulley would then be used to lift the ship up cause it to capsize or immobilize it when it was suddenly dropped. These bad boys came into use during the Second Punic War in 214 BC, when the Roman Republic attacked Syracuse. The Roman fleet approached the city walls under the cover of darkness, and the claws were deployed causing catastrophic damage and throwing the attack into confusion. The Romans learned a valuable lesson that day as to not fuck with Greek mathematicians. Incendiary Pigs These bad boys were the fantastic idea of the ancient Greeks and Romans, who when faced with the terrifying prospect of fighting against elephants on the battlefield, had to come up with fresh solutions in order to defeat them. The use of war elephants is thought to have originated in ancient India, but most people are familiar with when Hannibal went on a skiing holiday of them across the Alps. The side of the elephants usually had a huge advantage, as their sheer size struck fear into enemy soldiers and they could cause heavy casualties. However, they had one small weakness. When elephants became panicked, they would flee and cause casualties on both sides, so armies found ingenious ways to terrify them. Ancient writers believed elephants could be scared by the slightest squeal of a pig, so soldiers doused pigs in flammable substances, marched them towards the enemy elephants, and set them on fire to make them squeal as loud as possible. The elephants would flee in a state of distress and trample their own troops, allowing the opposition to fight an enemy 
enemy in chaos for an easy victory, as well as get a nice bacon sandwich at the end of it. Divorced by combat. This bad boy is a fantastic idea of medieval Germany, who believed a fight to the death was the only way to settle marital differences. In the past, trial by combat was a popular way to settle legal issues, and sometimes husband and wife would go against each other in cases where they couldn't resolve disputes. However, it would be under different circumstances to a normal trial by combat. They would fight in bodysuits, and due to the physical advantage the husband had, he would be placed inside a hole up to his waist, with one hand tied behind his back, and he would be equipped with a club. He was not allowed to leave his hole, but the wife could run freely around, and she would be equipped with rocks, weighing one to five pounds, wrapped in cloth. Whether it was a fight to the death or not is unknown, but the loser would have been put to death in the end. The husband would have been executed in the town square, whereas the wife would have been buried alive. So next time you're trying to spice up your love life, try giving this bad boy a go. Anti-tank dogs. These bad boys were the fantastic idea of Soviet Russia, who believed their canine companions were the perfect weapon against German tanks in World War II. The idea was that the dogs would be strapped with explosives and trained to run under enemy tanks where they would detonate. As if getting blown up wasn't bad enough, the training involved starving dogs and then placing food under the tanks so they would run underneath them. They also had to train the dogs to get used to the battle sounds so they wouldn't become scared when doing it for real. However, when the time came to use them, the idea horribly backfired on the Soviets. As they were trained with stationary tanks that didn't shoot at them, lots of dogs refused to go under these metal beasts trying to kill them, and got shot before they could get anywhere near the tanks. One larger problem is they had also been trained with Soviet diesel tanks and not German gas tanks, so due to the smell, the dogs would blow up their own tanks instead of the Germans, and the idea was quickly scrapped. Such good boys. Spy Cats These bad boys were the fantastic idea of the CIA, who believed they could use cats to spy on Soviet Russia during the Cold War. Operation Acoustic Kitty would have cats implanted with microphones in their ear canals and a small radio transmitter at the base of their skulls. The cyborg modifications allowed the cats to record and transmit private conversations from its surroundings, and the CIA hoped they could train them to spy on foreign officials. However, the project was quickly cancelled as it all went horribly wrong on the first test mission. A cat was to eavesdrop on two men sitting on a bench in a park, but when it was released, it ran into the road and was killed by a taxi immediately. The claim is disputed by the CIA, however, who said they cancelled the project due to difficulty training the cats and not because of rogue taxis. Medieval Murder Holes These bad boys were a fantastic idea of medieval castle designers who found that dropping objects on invaders' heads was a brilliant way to discourage them from attacking. These murder holes were usually located within interiors of fortified buildings, such as gateways, so the defenders could drop fire, rocks, scalding water, and other less than pleasant things on men once they had breached the walls. Despite what Hollywood tells us, burning oil wouldn't have been so common due to its cost. Machiculations were also similar to murder holes, but they were located on castle exteriors, whereas the murder holes were in areas you could trap a bunch of enemy soldiers and begin to murder them. The murder holes could have also doubled for other uses, such as communication between levels, so you could ask your mate how their day was going. The Lantern Shield This bad boy is the fantastic idea of Renaissance Italy, who believed turning a shield into a Swiss Army knife was the perfect way to win jewels. The original design was based on a buckler shield with a hook attached to hang a lantern from, so you could blind your opponents during a nighttime duel. However, after Italian blacksmiths attached a hook to the shield, they realised you could add a lot more to make it into an orgy of sharp objects, protruding from your arm to turn you into a deadly killing machine. Stakes, spikes and blades were all added, as well as a gauntlet for additional defence and mechanisms to darken or release the light from the lantern. It is believed the shield was never used on the battlefield, but only for patrolling Italian streets at night time. So next time you try and pick a fight in Renaissance Italy at night, make sure you're aware that your dueling opponent could be carrying a new high-tech anal probe 9000 on their shield.